Hey up, and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon, and in this episode, we are going to be exploring whether or not our beloved game of Necromunda is dead or dying, and what the future holds for our beloved Necromunda. Now, uh, that might seem like a very melodramatic thing to say. Is it dead or is it dying? But I'm seeing a lot of that all over Reddit, all over comments, all over the place. I have also been asked for my opinions on this as well um, by the wider community too. Um, and uh, the reason for this question, I suppose, comes about in that we haven't really had a sort of recent roadmap uh, on what the future is for Necromunda. We do, however, have lots of information to draw upon from, um, you know, a few years back, actually, of stuff that looks like it's very likely to happen for Necromunda. Um, first and foremost, before I get really into this video, though, please do like, share, subscribe, and of course, um, keep the conversation going in the comments down below. I think this is going to be a lively topic. I think lots of you have got some things to say on this. Um, of course, everybody's got an opinion. My opinions are my own, so please don't take any of this for absolute truth. Um, I'm not the oracle, of course, but I can probably shed some light on at least what I think is around the corner in the future for Necromunda. Firstly, is it dead? Is it dying? Um, I, I think people are asking this question because there really is projected at the moment only one more book, um, but I do not think, I think they'll be very uh, followed very closely by a, a new roadmap of sorts for the future of Necromunda. Firstly, though, I'd like to say that uh, already, I would say, as a player in 95, uh, Necromunda 95, um, uh, we only had one expansion with that, and the game didn't last very long in terms of its actual support by Games Workshop, okay? So the community kept it alive, just like they did with Blood Bowl, just like they did with a number of different other Games Workshop systems, so... The worst case scenario is if it really, you know, if, if Necromunda doesn't go much further than the Aranthian Succession books, which we are two of three in already, we've only got one more book to come. If it doesn't go any further than that, it's not the end of the world. Um, people will still be playing Necromunda. No one's going to die. Um, it's all going to be fine. The community will keep on supporting it just as I will, just as many others out there will as well. Um, it's not the end of the world if a game, you know, sort of ceases to be supported, I suppose, because the community usually keeps these things alive, um, as we've seen before with other systems. Um, but I would say uh, the, the, the good signs are there in terms of the support that we've already had from Games Workshop on this game. It's been, what, it came out in, in 2017, and it's 2023 now, so we've had five years of support already, um, six years of support already. Um, which is which is better than what we had with M95. We've had so many expansions, so many cool models, um, so much from Forge World. I mean, the amount of content and the amount of love uh, and support that Games Workshop have clearly been putting into this game is fantastic, and I'd just like to say thank you to Games Workshop for all that support over the years. Um, the community is stronger than ever, and it's certainly growing day by day. Um, so... You know, everything is looking pretty positive at the moment. So uh, for those of you who are sort of um, all doom and gloom about the future of it, um, please don't be because here are some reasons why um, I think that we're in a really good state uh, going forward. Um, but I would say, yeah, the, the developers behind the game, um, you know who you are, um, have put an awful lot of love and passion into this and you can just feel it with the amount of rich lore and stuff that's actually being released. In fact, I feel like it's almost their baby. It's Games Workshop's kind of like favorite sort of little side project i suppose it's it's an interesting one um but yeah it's clearly very very loved um by so many people so it's certainly not going anywhere anytime soon i guess that answers the main question okay so like i said we are two of three parts into something called the aranthian succession uh, if you're new to this the aranthian succession is a, a three-part book series uh based on a new sort of narrative around what's happening uh, on necromunda I won't go into it in too much detail, but we, we are two parts in uh, uh, into a three-part series. Um, so far, the first book, we had um, some, some new vehicle rules for Goliaths and Escher, um, amongst other things. Uh, the second book, we had some Corridor and Enforcer stuff, which kind of surprised us that we had a bit of Enforcer stuff, but they did need fleshing out a little bit, if you ask me. Um, and then the third book, it looks like, I imagine, it looks like we're going to have Delac and Vansar represented in there in some way. Um, they'll probably have some vehicle rules uh, and stuff for Ash Waste's settings. And the setting of the actual campaign, who knows where it's kind of going to go. Um, but, you know, there are various ideas floating about there, I suppose. So 
So Lack and Vance are, are kind of expected. Um, there could be a curveball there. It might be only one of those and then another book coming down the track with Delac or Vansar in it. But really that kind of makes sense because that's all the house gangs covered plus enforcers which are kind of, kind of tied into the whole um, Aranthian succession um, vibe at the moment as well. So the next thing as well um, is that, you know, Forge World minis for guilds, Dramatis Personae, uh, pets, brutes and all that stuff we're only probably about a quarter or a third of the way into actually getting through all of those. So Forge World will clearly be, uh, you know, they've, they've been producing some amazing um, minis for Necromunda and there are still so many of those that haven't been released or, or previewed yet. Um, I imagine they'll probably will want to finish all the guilds at least because those are fantastic miniatures and they're going to get used at some point by people. Um but there were also loads of Dramatis Personae and, uh, and Brutes and Pets as well that we're waiting for from, uh, from them too. Uh, the other thing I would say is that your, your sort of Chaos and Corrupted factions, uh, I feel like they need a bit more fleshing out. I feel like um, the Book of Ruin is kind of a little bit outdated now, I suppose, uh, in terms of the new core book. In fact, a lot of the books are slightly outdated, I suppose, but there's still some good stuff in that particular book, the Book of Ruin, um, particularly um, the campaign system that you get in there. Um, however, having said that, I do feel that Chaos Helots, Quartz Grinder Cults, and uh, what's the other one? Um, Gene Stealer Cult really do need a little bit of attention, a bit more fleshing out. As do, on the flip side of that, I suppose, Nomads, Squats, Ogrins, and Venators. Um, so are any of those gangs going to get official sort of fleshing out? Now, we have had, if you watched my last video on the Apocrypha Necromunda, we have had a little bit of you know, new rules and stuff sort of put into those gangs to give them a little bit of stuff. But, um, you know, there could definitely be more content for those for those other gangs going forwards, um, you know, for official rules and whatnot. The next question uh, is, is, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult not to compare it to N95, but of course Necromunda is still Necromunda. N95 uh, was the, the first iteration of the game. We're now on the, uh, the second iteration of the game and it's come a long way. We've got way more factions now than we ever did do in Necromunda and stuff, as, uh, in old Necromunda, but we've still got some things that are missing and I see a lot of people in the community asking about this. There are three factions that came out in the official expansion back in N95. Um, and those were Scavies, Ratskins, and Spiras. We did have Redemptionists obviously rolled into Cordor, which made a lot of sense, actually. They, they used to be a separate faction. But Scavies, or essentially Muties, I suppose, is what they're kind of referred to as in the books and in the lore now. Um, Scavies, I think, will end up being represented at some point going forward, uh, and you'll kind of see why in a minute when I talk about some of the future environments and battlefields that we've kind of seen hinted at in the past. But I do think Scavies maybe renamed as muties mutants of some variety will certainly appear in necromunda again i'm i'm pretty much um certain on that one uh rat skins uh this is a tricky one i think a lot of people have a problem with rat skins being um culturally in a, inappropriate i suppose in terms of their sort of native american uh style stuff i don't personally have a problem with it but um, you know i love the old miniatures but Will Games Workshop, uh, you know, reproduce them in this day and age? Now it's 2023. Probably not because I don't want to offend people. Um, so rat skins probably won't be done. Plus, to be honest, I think Ash Waste Nomads kind of fill that gap for uh, rat skins as well. Um, in terms of Spiras, though, um, personally, I'm hoping they don't ever go near Spiras again. Spiras were like the most elite um, band of uphive nobles that put on all their armor and gear and came down and just wrecked shit. Um, they were really broken back in the day and the middle the, the the miniatures were absolutely hideous if you ask me if you like those miniatures you have absolutely no taste uh, apologies but it's just true um, they're just dreadful um, and I, I really just didn't like didn't like the lore and stuff um, I don't know it's just a personal thing I suppose you might really like spires and you might really want them back but out of those three the one that I really want back the most is probably the one that's most likely to happen and that's your scabbies however you can also use, you know, outcast rules and stuff to, to play any of those gangs if you really wanted to, I suppose. Right, moving on to the next thing, though, and that's the sort of future environments and battlegrounds of Necromunda. Now, there was a long, long time ago, uh, this was all sort of like previewed at some sort of event, and we saw a bunch of slides, which I'm actually going to put into this video now. 
um, on you know a, a future sort of roadmap of battleground stuff, um, Necromunda battlegrounds and environments, I suppose. The first one was Hive Mortis. Hive Mortis is a different hive in Necromunda, um, and the sort of premise behind this was that it was going to be intense and gruesome survival horror in a hive overrun by plague zombies and pox walkers. So. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I like everybody loves zombies, right? So that sounds really, really cool. Um, would this be a, a sort of future book, perhaps that rolls in scavies? I would say scavies fit in there, seeing as they did have plague zombies in scavy lists back in the day. Um, really, really cool idea there for that one. Um, I'd like to see that one come into fruition. I suppose the next one would be Hive Secundus as well. We saw a little bit of a slide on this one as well, and this was kind of treasure hunting in the former capital of culture and learning with rad tainted gene stealers and whatnot. Um, you know, is it different enough? I suppose to Hive Mortis and the other hive where we had the uprising um, campaign based in. I suppose. Um, not sure. Uh, you know, if we see both of those, great. But out of the two, I'd much rather see uh, Hive Mortis. I think. Um, the next thing as well, and it's quite an interesting one, is the Sump Seas. You know, um, the, the lore around the Sump Sea is pretty cool. Um, and we've recently seen the 10th tenth, uh, tenth Apocrypha Necromunda campaign uh, scenario sort of thing came out with rules for um, Sump Barges and uh, Scrap Skiffs as well and rules for drowning and swimming and stuff officially. Um, so that's there now. Will they actually um, flesh it out and expand it into full nautical campaigns and whatnot? Uh, with a bit of spider hunting thrown in there. I think they, they could have done, but I think, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really sure that it's different enough from the Ash Wastes uh, sort of mechanics enough to, to actually warrant doing an entire thing on it. I'm not really sure. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens there, but there is some really good community content out there um, on, on this stuff as well. So, uh, you know... You can you can already use those rules for some sump battles and some sea some seafaring stuff. The next one and quite an interesting one is the polar scrap spoils. The, this one as well has been sort of talked about in the past, and this is about the the polar regions of Necromunda um, being huge scrap um, spoil mountains uh, that are fro in these frozen polar regions. I suppose um, sounds really really cool. I don't know enough about it. I haven't read too much about the, the polar regions of Necromunda, but uh, apparently there are lots of riches to be found and treasures and stuff there as well. Um, and I like the idea of uh, frozen stuff. Sounds really cool. Frozen Ash. And the next one, and probably the most interesting one, I suppose, is the Eye of Selene. For those that don't know, the Eye of Selene is a giant space station that orbits Necromunda uh, and acts as a sort of protection for Necromunda. You know, all the trade that comes in and out of Necromunda has to go through the Eye of Selene, I believe. And um, uh, this is where gangs battle against space pirates, smugglers, bilge scum, cargo cults and ergol infestations. So this sounds like the most likely and the most flavoursome of the bunch here. Um, really, really cool idea. Um, could you use boarding actions, sort of terrain and stuff for this one? Probably. Um, be interesting to see how, how this gets worked, if it does indeed come to happen. Um, but yeah, the Eye of Selene, Polar Scraps Boils, Sump Seas, Hive Secundus, Hive Mortis, and, and others. Um, those are just some of the future uh, things that hopefully we have to look forward to uh, in Necromunda. I don't think, again, things are going anywhere. And even if they did just completely halt today and stop producing any Necromunda content, the community is very much um, very, very strong and global and is certainly going to keep things alive. You have tons and tons of really cool Necromunda uh, community content and rules out there. I'm currently working on some sort of rule stuff that hopefully I'm going to team up with somebody to produce miniatures for as well. So watch this space on that one. Um, but yeah, I think the answer to this whole question is absolutely, you can rest assured that there's, there's something around the corner, um, be it any of that stuff or just a little bit, who knows? Um, be interesting to see where things go. But uh, I thought it would be an interesting time to talk about this sort of topic because I am seeing a lot of it uh, in the wider community as well. People talking about the doom and gloom of, uh, you know, nothing around the corner for Necromunda. It's just nonsense. So there you go anyway. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Just a quick one there. Um, but yeah, please do like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace out.